2,000 miles away. Lettuce harvesting has become an assembly line operation. Cutter, packer, sprayer, box closer. Salad Bowl Express. Uh, today's lettuce that we've got is probably the best we've had in about a week and a half. It's uh, 54 to 55 pounds absolutely clean. Derek Dridevanis is sales manager of the Admiral Packing Company in Salinas. He sells lettuce by the carload to buyers all over the country. Just call us back with that order, will you? You know, the one you got in your back pocket. A refrigerator car holds 30,000 heads of lettuce. 57 foot reefer. Is bound east for New York City. The morning after the lettuce is picked, the Admiral Lettuce car has been joined to a 50 car train called the Salad Bowl Express. Yeah, there we go. Five Southern Pacific engines are needed to pull the train over a 7,000 foot high pass. In the SD 45s. <laughs> The route climbs nice. for Donner Pass. On average, 35 feet of snow fall here each winter, and avalanches have obstructed travelers as long as the pass has been used. <laughs> Cannibalism. In November 1846, blizzards trapped the emigrant Donner Party here. 35 died of starvation and exposure. Some survivors resorted to cannibalism. In the spring of 1982, 10 feet of snow fell in 12 days in the high Sierras. Southern Pacific stopped all trains across Donner Pass. That like traffic cost $100,000 a day. A spreader. Snow fighters tried to keep the lines open with spreaders, snow plows that pushed the huge drifts to the side. View. But when the snow drifts too deep, spreaders stall and the pushing wings collapse. The nerve center of the railroad's fight is a community of houses and offices connected by tunnels so buried in snow that it is called Mole Town. <laughs> Here, a hundred men and women work day and night. That's been our operator. Nine o'clock. Get it out of town, of course, will you? Yeah. Gotta get the Salad Bowl Express through. Get, down there, give them a little and get, them get that fucking snow off the tracks. Management calls for its ultimate snow fighting machine. Rotary plows that can dig through almost any accumulation of snow. Yeah, there we go. Steam powered rotary. Throwing five tons of snow a minute, 150 feet from the line. The rotary can literally dig a trench deeper than itself. As one rotary chews toward the top of the pass from the west, another struggles up from the east. The first train comes through. Dedicated men with pride in their work have opened the line in only five days. And trains like the Salad Bowl Express can once again take the direct route to New York. There we go. Beyond the Sierras, the Salad Bowl Express drops into the desert. And a new crew takes over. On the long straight runs, there's time for shared stories. And for trainmen to enjoy the camaraderie, which is part of the attraction they feel for their work. I don't think it's dawned on me yet, but I've had a Ask me about my new baby. <laughs> Sunday night, I had it Monday morning. The last couple of days have been pretty busy for me. I'm lucky, generally the railroad doesn't allow you to be in town. They keep you away from home quite often. So I was pretty lucky to be home when it happened. In 1950, I was on a high-speed uh, perishable train and a faster train came out of the side track in front of us. We hit him head on about 52 miles an hour. The engineer 
on the other train with Joe. Oh. I'm very lucky to be here. Uh, and that scared me. By evening, the train is in eastern Nevada. The next morning, now with a Union Pacific engine and crew, the Salad Bowl Express climbs toward the continent. It'll be pulling in the North Platte, Nebraska, pretty soon. Around a curve, Castle Rock, a well-known American landmark, comes into view. The famous photographer, A.J. Russell, captured this same scene when the Transcontinental Railroad was nearing completion. In 1867, it took three months to cross by wagon from the railheads on the Missouri River to the Pacific Coast. The new rail line cut that time to <laughs> All those people are dead now. Irish immigrants living in railroad car dormitories built west. Chinese coolies built east. Coolies. It was the most dramatic engineering accomplishment of the century. Gorges were spanned, mountains cut through or tunneled under. An army of workers fought summer heat and winter snow at a cost of uncounted lives. There were no movie cameras to record the great undertaking, but once movies were invented, filmmakers recreated the drama in classic film. John Ford's The Iron Horse. Cecil B. B. Cecil B. B. DeMille. DeMille's Union Pacific. I watched that one. celebration when the two lines met at Promontory, Utah. A.J. Russell recorded the scene in what is perhaps the most famous photograph in American history. And in 1924, President John Grant. Ford recreated the scene for his film. He based the action on the photograph, complete with a still photographer to pose the crowd. Cool. The joining of America's East and West by rail is even more important today. The Salad Bowl Express is only one of 60 to 70 Three cabins. a day moving across the nation on this one line. Now near the end of its second day, the Salad Bowl Express comes under the traffic control of dispatchers at North Platte, Nebraska. Here, three men per shift control every train on the 245 miles of track diagrammed on the wall. They decide which trains get priority on the line. The Salad Bowl Express is rushed along. What kind of speed do you think you can make there now if you get a 70 mile an hour train out behind the 30 These computers are obsolete. Start shuffling trains. If he gets by here, then I'll let that other eastbound go. But he's going around one train in the process of it right now. Midnight. The Salad Bowl Express arrives at North Platte. Hump yard. Some cars will be sent south and eastward on other lines. Other cars will be added. The freight cars are pushed up a hump and separated. Gravity powers them down the slope. The tracks divide again and again. Automatic sensors weigh the car and retarders break them. There are 221 miles of track in the yard, and as many as 5,000 freight cars at a time. By 4 a.m., a new train has been made up. A new crew comes aboard, and the train moves on. In the afternoon, the train crosses the Missouri River, Operated now by Chicago and Northwestern Railroad, it traverses the rich farmlands of Iowa. The next morning, the train is in Chicago. 
Marshalling yards like this one are dangerous places. You have to watch for cars coming from both directions. There's no <laughs> debris sticking out of a car. Nor Try can. not to get caught in a situation where you have trains moving at high speed in both directions on each side of you. If you do have a tendency to feel dizzy, lay down on the ground. You put Rio under the car. Despite railroad emphasis on safety, there is an average of 15 deaths and 6,700 injuries to American rail yard workers each year. Danger for railroaders comes not only from the trains themselves. In the early days, desperados like Jesse James, Bush Cassidy, and the Sundance Kid held up trains in the lonely plains and mountains of the West. Yeah, there we go. Today, Trains are most often attacked as they pass through depressed areas. Look at that old CR locomotive. We had one conductor, they uh, stopped the train, and they got him with a gun and robbed him. Looks like my pap. It was just so cute. I mean, the regal are out here. That's why I think we got such a small job. We have our up to balance, too. This is our most dangerous spot in the world. <laughs> Run him over! Run him over! Little oh, bastard! Conrail. The many dedicated men and women who are drawn to railroad work also live with the danger that goes with the job. The Salad Bowl Express rolls through the heart of the Middle West. Yeah, there we go. On the fifth morning, the train parallels the Mohawk River. Now under Conrail control, it follows the same route taken in 1825 by the Erie Canal. There we go. Pulling into New York. Early on the sixth morning, the Salad Bowl Express arrives at its destination. A B-23-7. 